The Enigma machine was the German army's most powerful code-making machine the world has ever seen. Combine that with the most advanced military of that era, you have a combination of firepower and intelligence that they thought would lead them to total domination of Europe. After the German defeat in World War I, Arthur Sherby has created the first Enigma machine. This machine was first used commercially for sending ciphered codes to and from businesses. Then in the late 1920s and early 1930s, the German army and navy took Sherbius's machine and modified it for military use. In the 1930s, German code experts took the simpler version and complicated it more by adding plugs with electronic circuits. The first models were basic machines with just rotors that had to be placed in the right position in order for the message to be comprehended. The military added the plug boards on the front of the machine for extra added protection. These plugs had to be placed into the right socket in order for the message to be understood. People around the world thought that this code was unbreakable because it had about 150 quintillion combinations. One of the flaws of the Enigma machine was that the letter could never translate to itself. For example, the letter E could never actually be coded as an E when it went through the machine. This flaw was first discovered in 1931 when a German spy allowed French spy masters to take pictures of the operating manuals and send them to the French and the British. The British and the French cryptoanalysis were unsuccessful in cracking the code until it was sent to the Polish Cipher Bureau. They made advances in cracking the code, and in 1933, they had reconstructed an Enigma machine complete with internal wiring to start reading German messages. This valuable information that was discovered by the Polish Cipher Bureau was sent to the British prior to the German invasion of Poland in 1939. The Enigma Machine The Enigma machine can be broken down to its four core functions. The keyboard, the lamp board, rotors, and the plug board. The keyboard is where you type the text you would like to have coded or decoded. The lamp board displays the ciphered text. If I type an X on the keyboard, the lamp board displays an S. For added security, there are four rotors that move with every entry of a character. Each of these rotors must be placed in a specified order to be correctly coded or decoded. If the rotors are not in the same place, when I type the X this time, the lamp board shows a G. The plug board was the final security feature which affected how the keyboard communicates with the lamp board. Much like the rotors, these wires must be plugged into the proper channels in order to obtain the desired result. It was understood that the Germans could very well have won the war if these codes would continue to be effective. The British put together a team of advanced mathematicians and scientists and put them to work at Bletchley Park, which is about one hour northwest of London. This team was led mainly by two British men named Alan Turing and Gordon Welchman. These two men took what the Polish Bureau discovered and tried to invent a computer to use the Enigma flaw to decipher messages. Turing and Welchman completed inventing the computer Colossus in early March 1940. The basic way it works is backwards. It takes all the possibilities and discards the ones that don't work, eventually leaving the right code. The machine manipulates symbols on a strip of tape according to a table of rules. To be more exact, it is a mathematical model of computation that defines the device. Despite the model's simplicity, given any computer algorithm, a Turing machine could be constructed that is capable of simulating that algorithm's logic. The problem with this is that it took too much time. 
Germans would change rotor and switchboard positions every night at midnight. This means that the code had to be recracked every day. Turing and Welchman needed to modify the computer to decipher the codes quicker. After numerous hours and attempts to try and figure out how to make the computer break codes quicker, they were successful. As soon as the first codes started to be broken, the Allies gained a tremendous advantage over the Germans. After the Allies cracked the codes, they were used in all aspects of war, land, air, and sea. The codes were first used in North Africa to give the Allies valuable information about the shortage of German petroleum. The next big use of cracked codes were in preparation and invasion of Normandy on D-Day. The Allies found out about Hitler's plans to defend Normandy, and when they did, they sent fake invasion plans to the Germans. After the Germans found the fake plans, they sent troops to the wrong locations. This turn of events undoubtedly helped the Allied invasion with success. The team at Bletchley Park also helped the air offensive. Most notably, the information was used for strategic bombing during the later years of the war. The team sent false transmissions to the German air defenders and also had maps of where the most German defense was. This helped minimize casualties during the bombings. The most important aspect of the war was the War of the Atlantic. German U-boats were targeting supply ships sent from the United States and it was directly affecting Britain. Britain was extremely low on supplies like food and petroleum. The team at Bletchley Park mapped out the German U-boat wolf packs and gave the information to the Royal Navy. Oh God, you did it. You just defeated Nazism with a crossword puzzle. There are five people in the world to know the position of every ship in the Atlantic. They are all in this room. Oh, good God. Oh, I don't think even he has the power that we do right now. No, there's going to be an attack on a British passenger convoy. Right there. God, you're right. Well, those U-boats are only 20, 30 minutes away. Civilians, hundreds of them. We can save their lives. I'll phone Denniston's office so that he can alert the Admiralty. Oh, do you think there's enough time to save them? There should be. If we can get a message to that convoy, Come on, she can... office, please. No, no, it's urgent. No. What the hell are you, you doing? You, you can't call Denniston. You, you can't tell him about the attack. What are you talking about? We can have air support over that convoy in 10 minutes. Let the U-boat sink the convoy. Look, it's been a big day. Maybe you're suffering from no, a bit of shock. You don't or... have time for... No! Oh, you, you! That's enough! That's enough! Stop, you! Don, the attack is in minutes. Yes, no, I'm fine, fine, fine. You know why people like violence, you? Because it feels good. Sometimes we can't do what feels good. We have to do what is logical. What's logical? Hardest time to lie to somebody is when they're expecting to be lied to. Oh, God. What? If someone's waiting for a lie, you can't just uh, give them one. <sighs> Damn it, Alan's right. What? What would the Germans think if we destroy their U boats? Nothing, they'll be dead. No. No, you can't be right. So our convoy suddenly veers off course. A uh, squadron of RAF bombers miraculously descends on the coordinates of the U boats. What will the Germans think? The Germans will know that we have broken the Enigma. One of the biggest contributions of breaking the code was shortening of the war by about two to three years. It gave the Allies enemy intel that saved the lives of both soldiers and civilians. It is estimated that for every year of war in Europe, there were about 7 million deaths. With this estimate, breaking the code saved 14 to 21 million lives across Europe. The problem with this is, the Allies had to be careful with how often they used the intel and where they used it. If the Germans found out the code had been broken, they would have immediately changed the codes or adjusted a different part of the machine, which could have potentially delayed or avoided the breaking of the Enigma code. People still question today if the Allies, scientists, and others who were aware of the circumstances could have done more to save lives, especially the lives of people dying in concentration camps. It is important to recognize the role that the scientists and mathematicians had in the war, and not so much on what could have been. Overall, the breaking of the Enigma Code changed the war. Did it single-handedly win the war? Probably not, as the Allies were too powerful, but it did save millions of lives and helped shorten the war. The sacrifice of the scientists, mathematicians, and analysts who worked on the machine are often forgotten or overlooked when learning about World War II. 
Their contribution to the war effort was just as important as the soldiers fighting and dying on the field of battle.